What is up you beautiful people welcome to this free course called the ultimate guide to prompt engineering and chat GPT. In this entire training I'll give you a brief introduction to chat GPT and how exactly you can write the request the questions that you ask to the GPT to get the maximum output of it. After a lot of popular demand I figured this is something that you might need so here I am so let's get started. So in this particular training we'll be covering these contents which is Chapter number one, introduction to chat GPT. We'll learn a little bit about it. Strengths and weaknesses of chat GPT, what it can do, what it cannot do. Uh, I'll give you some tips for success uh, and to get the most out of chat GPT 3 because that's the most, uh, the free version. Chapter number four is when I will show you how to verify the information that you just gathered out of chat GPT. Number five will be the introduction to prompt engineering, probably why you are here. Uh, number six, prompt defining. Number seven, prompt refining. Chapter eight, I'll give you three additional tips to take your prompting to the next level. And chapter nine is when I'll give you some bonuses that you can take home and use ChatGPT to become an expert marketer or a businessman. All right. So without any further ado, let's get started with the chapter number one, which is introduction to chat gpt so welcome to chapter number one introduction to chat gpt in this chapter we'll learn a little bit about the background of uh, this gpt thing why is this called gpt and what is this ai thing how did it did it evolve all those things a little bit of a boring stuff but it will uh, be important for you to observe and notice why you are getting the kind of results that you are getting right now right so talking about gpt gpt stands for generative pre-trained transformer language and it is designed to understand and generate human-like text based on information it has learned from various sources like wikipedia common cool so many things i'll tell you more about those and the gpt right now the the one that is developed by this company open ai is you know is trained on massive number of data sets to make uh, this beautiful AI product which understands what we have to say to it. So it just means that it has already learned much before that you can even interact with. As a result, it can generate meaningful responses based on the knowledge it has acquired during its training. So here is how the AI systems work to be honest. So we train a system to you know, understand some input. This input can be a question, a query and analyze it, reason with it, understand what exactly the customer means and give you the right answer, right? To understand, analyze and give you the right answer, it has to have some prior knowledge, right? It's, it's as good as asking, let's say you have an employee at your home and or let's say you have a personal assistant and you tell your personal assistant, hey, grab me the apple, right? Or let's say grab me my phone or grab me a phone or whatever. Let's, let's call it grab me an apple. Right? And this apple might mean an apple phone and it can also mean an apple the fruit, right? So if they don't know or they don't have that reasoning capability to understand what exactly do you mean by this, they will probably mess up, right? So this is exactly what it is. This language model is trained on massive amount of data so that it can understand what you are telling and give you the right suggestion or the right output or the right uh, response. So let's also talk about large language models. So chat GPT is some sort of an extrapolation of this NLP or uh, I would say machine learning uh, technique called as uh, the natural language processing which means they train the AIs uh, or the machine to learn how humans talk, right? That's how the natural language processing power comes in. And among these, there is a certain kind of model called as the large language model. Large language models essentially means that the, the AI has been trained on massive amounts of data and especially in this case, text data. And they are trained on that particular data so that they can predict what word comes next. That is exactly why chat GPT is also, you know, uh, the, the core system, the core model behind training this AI, the G chat GPT AI is called the large language model training. Well, no surprise, but it was discovered that the more data you feed to the system, the better it learns and the better is the quality of the output, right? That is what has happened. And chat GPT, which the free version is called GPT-3 or 3.5. It has been trained on 175 billion parameters, right? I'll, uh, I'll send you the link of the paper, maybe drop in the comment, I'll uh, you know send the link there. 
uh, this was trained on 570 gigabytes of text and its predecessor GPT-2 was over 100 times smaller and at 1.5 billion parameters. This was the uh, this was a paper published by the Stanford or uh, Stanford University Human Centered AI uh, newsletter. And this has been trained on massive data like common crawl, web text to books one by two, Wikipedia, English, examples of the program coded in uh, CSS, JavaScript, Python. Now, LLMs, the way they work, they predict the next word that can come uh, after a particular query. So if I say, hey, bring me the whatever, right? Based on the context, it will give the next word. But at this level of data input that we have given to chat GPT, it can do so in a mind bending scale. So this ability allows them to write paragraphs and entire pages of content. There are people writing entire books. There are people writing blog posts and whatnot using just ChatGPT. And that is the magic behind it. The next thing that I want to talk about is ChatGPT versus Google. A lot of the people keep on uh, arguing, hey, is ChatGPT a Google killer? And you know, how is it different? So let me just clarify that particular thing. You see, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence and it's some sort of, I would say, a personal assistant. I, I see ChatGPT as literally a personal assistant. And it's, it's as of like you give it a particular context, it understands that and gives you the right output. It's, it's like as good as having an employee or an intern that can like listen to your command. Now it's, then you can have a conversation with this GPT and the kind of input that you get is very, very personalized to just your particular problem or the query, right? And it's very good to get detailed answers, descriptions, have a little bit of context behind it and rather I would say a faster generation of solutions. That is why chat GPT is so, so popular because Imagine Google. Google is more like a library. If you go into the library, you can ask the librarian, hey, I want this particular help. What do you suggest? The librarian will tell, you know what? Uh, section 2, aisle 3, row number 5, marketing book ka name, ye hai. Go ahead and check, read that book. Page number 3, you probably get your answer. That is exactly how Google works. You know, the mission statement of Google to organize world's information. That's what it does. So it basically gives you direction to the books or the library. However, it doesn't give you the exact answer. Nowadays, it is obviously improving. ChatGPT understands your query. It's like that math tutor, let's say, uh, who can understand what is your doubt and give you the right answer, tell you that, you know what, you should do this and this should give you the solution. So it's just like that, right? I hope that is a clear cut uh, answer to this particular question, which is like, how is ChatGPT different from Google? Right? And why there is such an arms race for AI is because, well, you get information so, so faster with an AI that a lot of people started using it. And when OpenAI made ChatGPT public, what happened was everybody started using it and it gathered a massive number of user base, which is why Microsoft showed interest in GPT and started, you know, just bought it completely for, I think, $10 billion, if I'm not wrong. Now, the beautiful part about it is like that this AI can be integrated with the search engines to give you even more personalized recommendation. One more thing that happened is because with Google, a lot of the, uh, I would say, a lot of the revenue came from Google AdSense and people would search for something, they would see ads, they will see search results and they would, uh, Google would charge money for the ad uh, impression and everything. But here, people are getting results right there. So they might just ask chat GPT it and uh, about the query and Google might just feel left out and they don't earn anything. Hence, Google is like having that competition that they also want to come up with a AI tool which can uh, basically uh, do the same thing, which is why they have launched BARD. And it is not yet launched in India at the time of this recording. And if it is at all launched at some point in the future, obviously we'll be the first ones to use it, right? So yeah, that's about, uh, you know, how is ChatGPT different from Google? The next chapter, we will discuss the strengths and weaknesses of ChatGPT and how you can use it for your own benefit, right? So let's get into chapter number two, where I'll be talking about strengths and weaknesses of ChatGPT.
So without any further ado, let's get started. So here's the reason why I love ChatGPT. The first thing is personalization. Like I mentioned in the last chapter that uh, the solutions that you get is very, very personalized based on the query that you give. Like for example, if I tell, hey, I'm a 28 year old male, I am 76 kgs of weight and uh, my height is this, my age, I just told you. And I, give me like a seven day workout routine, home workout routine through which I can lose another four kgs and give, also give me a South Indian diet plan that should go with it. GPT will understand and give you that response. Imagine if you just had to do the same with Google, you'll probably have to go ahead and research about, uh, you know, what are the common household exercises I could do, then research about the nutrition question, the kind of uh, food that I should eat when I'm in Karnataka, all, the <clears throat> all these things, right? However, with GPT, the kind of language it has been trained on, it will give you the answer that much faster, that much more personalized to your specific needs, right? That's the beauty of it. Although I'd be careful when it comes to health related things, I'll talk about that in a little bit of time. Second is ease of use. It's like super, super easy, easy to use. I mean, <laughs> the interface cannot be like more simpler. Just go to chat.openai.com and you pretty much got this input like you're pretty much sorted just select the model type in something and you get results out of it right it cannot be more simpler this is why it is you know so so popular that there is no complications like other ai tools like you have to go ahead and figure out okay vsl ke liye, there is a different tool there is a tool for writing blog posts this is like too much right and third is contextual understanding it is very very good at understanding the context behind the query and give you the right response. So if I just tell you, hey, act like a strict manager sending a email to the employee regarding their bad performance, it will definitely take on that particular persona and write a certain kind of response, right? That is exactly why people love it a lot. So you see right here, Dear employee, I'm writing to express my disappointment with the recent performance as a valued member of our team. I mean, this is pretty good, right? It has given a pretty nice long email that uh, a manager can send. So this is exactly why it, it understands that particular concept and gives the right response and that's why we love it. Uh, fourth reason why I love ChatGPT is because of its decision making prowess. It is very, very advanced when it comes to like deciding things. Although I would not completely depend on ChatGPT to give, you know, take decisions for me. The reason why I'm saying this is because ultimately we are humans. And what I would suggest is you treat GPT as like your personal assistant, you know, you just take the recommendation, but don't implement on it without having some critical thinking around it. I hope that makes sense, right? And fifth, obviously time saving. I kept mentioning this, that uh, a lot of the time you just have to ask a question, you get the answer as opposed to like researching on Google hours and hours, you just get the data in minutes. That's the most beautiful thing about chat GPT. Right. But that said, there are multiple things that I personally don't like about ChatGPT and there are a lot of problems in it. Right. So, for example, the first problem is the quality of answers depends on the quality of directions that you get. Now, ChatGPT's ability to provide helpful answer relies on how you ask questions or give instruction. It's as good as saying that. I mean, let's take an example. If you had a personal assistant or let's say you had an intern. And you told them that, he, hey, you know what, uh, grab me an apple. They might either think it's an apple, the fruit, apple, the phone. If he still manages to understand that you have asked me the apple phone, he might not know where exactly the phone is. But if you tell your intern or your personal assistant say that, you know what, grab my iPhone. I think I have kept it near the lounge next to the sofa and there was a flower vase near to it. Then they'll have a direction where to go. Right. So you have to be very, very detailed when you are asking questions to get the right kind of response. And that is obviously I would uh, classify that as a smaller problem, because if you do not give GPT the right instructions, it is still not smart enough to understand what exactly you are asking for. Next, it does provide non-toxic response. And while it is good, it does uh, avoid some uh, and not safe for work kind of responses, but because of which sometimes the answers become very insensitive and irrational, right? That now, here's one more thing. The answers that you get in GPT-3 or even 4 sometimes are not always correct. You see, the 
hard limit of knowledge of chat gpt is at like september of 2021 if i'm not wrong it has been trained on the data that was published before that it's not after that so many times what happens is the information that you get is limited to that particular date and not the any kind of information that is published after 2021 so sometimes if you ask it for some codes and stuff if the you know kind of the platform itself is updated you may not get the same answer so always double check for any critical error that you might get with gpt itself right now many times what happens is the reasoning capability of gpt3 or even gpt4 is not the best uh, of all for example in one of the future lessons i'll show you uh, how i use gpt to give out uh, the data on meal plans of uh, of an entire week so that i lose weight and it is not the most perfect response that i had expected out of it right so sometimes it is not the best when it comes to complex reasoning but it is good at like simple reasoning like hey what should i do if i'm hungry and i want to lose weight how do i control my hunger all those things it can help but when it comes to a little bit of like more complex uh, reasoning thought process that is not the best uh, language model of all as of now right in future it might really really change gpt4 definitely has come come uh, very very long uh, you know gpt4 definitely has come out very well and it's much more advanced than chat gpt3 itself all right welcome to chapter number 3 tips for success in getting the most out of chat gpt3 so right here we'll talk about how you can get the maximum results out of gpt some tips and then we'll move into prompt engineering and all that stuff right so first thing first like we mentioned in the last uh, class that the quality of the output depends on the quality of the input and that is exactly why you have to be very very specific and very clear in your requests you have to provide context draft a detailed paragraph on what exactly you want out of gpt and the better you put in your the you input the better will be the output of it right it is as simple as that so be very very specific don't just try hey what workout should i do rather what would be a suitable workout for a middle aged man who wants to lose weight and is on very rich indian diet right be very specific and it will give you the right kind of response here second be patient and understanding because at the end of the day this is not a human that can understand and help you out this is an ai that has a very limited set of data to work with so all the responses may not be uh, the most perfect ones so what you need to do is to have an open mind and do refine the prompt i'll show you the process of defining and refining prompts in the future but do consider changing and iterating and giving out a very good uh, i would say giving a very good input query here third use gpt3 as supplement not a replacement like most of the people say that you know what it might replace us in our jobs and what not well it will not right it is it's as good as that intern or that uh, you know personal assistant it might replace them but still it, it is not physical it's still digital it can only give you that kind of information i would not depend on chat gpt to give me a complete let's say a product in itself even when i suggest people writing blog post and stuff i still tell them that you should go ahead and uh, you know revisit the entire thing use a little bit of your subject matter expertise and then you go ahead and publish a blog or do whatever right your own expertise it should be at the core of every single problem statement that you give into chat gpt and you should verify every single information that you get out of chat gpt right that i hope that makes sense on always when it comes to health medical and legal professions always 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 consult some expert do not take its word for granted right and do not make that mistake there might be some lacunas it might create and that might land you in trouble in the future so i would not recommend that at all finally have a lot of fun and be creative on your input uh, sometimes you might want to have fun ask chat chat gpt to write emojis on your blogs ask gpt to like uh, you know connect you with some uh, gifs <laughs> with the blogs that you are writing all those things you can do and it's a really really fun thing to have right and uh, that is all about it uh, chapter number 4 is where we'll be discussing how exactly you should verify the information that you have gathered with chat gpt all right so let's move on to the next chapter
All right, welcome to chapter number four on how to verify the information that you get out of chat GPT. Well, the information that you normally get out of chat GPT may not be always the best information out there. So you need to use your brains a little to see whether this is something that you, uh, you want, right? So there are the first thing is like ask chat GPT for specific information backed by sources. And sometimes I've seen like the link that you generate um, that work approximately 50 to 60 percent of the time not always so if i were to give you an example the most significant contributions of albert einstein to quantum physics let's see so it has definitely added a lot of the contributions uh, We'll just ask him, give me the appropriate sources for each of these points. So you go ahead and simply ask them. So it has given some, uh, you know, some links. So go ahead and check this links properly. But if you see, a lot of the links don't work. Like see, this page doesn't exist. This kind of exists, but I think if you click here, you'll get some notes and all. Uh, this doesn't exist, 404 error. This is one more, and this is one more. So some information does come, some doesn't. So in my experience, what I've seen is like roughly 50 to 60% links do work, else don't. If you're writing a research paper using GPT, do be careful on the information that it gives out right uh, use tools for verification like google wikipedia libraries and database consult experts in the field and do look for and do use a little bit of your critical thinking skills to understand whether this is the right thing or not many times you might get some nonsensical response from gpt so use your brain understand whether this is the right thing to do and then implement it use it as a supplement not a replacement just like i mentioned right investigate any point that might seem questionable or uncertain because the last thing that we want is to have wrong data in our hands and do cross check information through other means or methods through this right so i hope this helps from the next chapter we'll be going into the more interesting subjects which is like prompt engineering so this is where exactly we'll figure out how to write kick ass prompt so that you get wonderful results right all right Welcome to chapter number five, which is called the introduction to prompt engineering. And here we have two things, right? If I have to define what is prompt engineering, well, prompt engineering is designing and refining the input text, which is also known as the prompt, uh, to guide the AI model like ChatGPT in generating specific and relevant responses. Example here, when I when we put like, can you share the links to the references or what are the biggest, best exercises to, you know, best ways to exercise your heart. All of these are called prompts. And the more accurate the prompts are, is the better the results you get, right? This process is crucial for effectively utilizing AI models and ensuring that they produce the desired output. And like, for example, instead of telling, hey, what are the best ways to exercise your heart? If I tell it that, um, what are the best home workouts for cardiovascular health for people suffering from diabetes? Let's put this. It will give a much accurate response here. Right. So the more efficient you are in writing this particular prompt, the better kind of results you get out of it. Now, good prompts will help you with this. They'll make sure that the AI understands your commands and provides relevant responses. They help reduce the chances of getting weird ass responses. And they do allow you to harness the full potential of AI models by guiding them through specific tasks or problem solving. Right. And how does a good prompt look like is something that we'll be discussing in the future. But in general, there are two parts to prompt engineering. Part number one is prompt defining. Part number two is called prompt refining. In the future, I'll in the future lessons, I'll talk about each of these particular things. So yeah, let's start with the first one, which is chapter number six, prompt defining. So how do you define a prompt? Well, defining or drafting the perfect prompt has three particular angles, which is one, clarity and specificity. Two, context and background information. Three, desired output. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the, these. 
first when i say clarity and specificity an effective prompt should be clear and be specific it should not be vague hey, like hey give me like uh, 10 exercises to do right you have to be specific give me 10 exercises to do i'm you know to improve my muscle mass and reduce weight here itself if i say what are uh, or how to work out what's the best way to exercise yeah let's see we do this right if we just write something like this the very first thing it says consult with a doctor or a certified fitness professional right so let's say if i do this exercise um, you know to improve my cardio vascular health at the age of 55 if i do this it can be like it's very specific right earlier the first response was consult with a doctor or a certificate certified fitness professional here well start slowly and gradually increasing intensity aim for at least 150 minutes incorporate both cardiovascular and strength training exercises listen to your body all these things so the better your prompt is the more information that you put in the prompt the better it becomes right and it's very very important to provide context or the background information if you do this your prompting will go to the next level so let me go ahead and show you this right uh, i recently turned 30 i have some belly fat and i weigh um, let's say 78 kgs my height is 5 feet 9 inch or 9.5 oh no no it's just 5 for 9 inch yeah and uh, uske baad if i go ahead and ask uh, mm, i want to lose weight give me a weekly exercise plan weekly i would say 60 minute exercise plan including or uh, i would say workout plan including cardio uh including cardio i go to a gym nearby which has basic equipments or uh, which has i would say only weight training equipments like barbells and dumbbells uh, barbells dumbbells and and uh, machines to do pull ups and uh, i would say what is it called dips pull ups and dips mm let's go that let's see what happens all right wow we have full body workout 45 minutes cardio workout 60 minutes you see it it is still not ready yet okay full body workout 45 minute i should do this squats bench press dumbbell rows overhead press cardio workout da 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 and uh, i think day 4 it is giving me a rest day and day 7 a rest day it is giving me uh, a good uh, one week uh, plan so it's pretty cool right i actually kind of followed this um a uh, south indian male so just uh, i weigh 77 kgs my height is 5 feet 9 inch my age is 28 just me a uh, meal plan or say south indian meal plan so that i lose weight to 72 kg so let's check what kind of results we get out of it yeah we got this right uh 
breakfast to idlis one boiled eggs <laughs> i love this right it has given some sort of result so yeah so when you give a little bit of context on what exactly uh, who you are and what kind of results you should get out of it and it gives the right kind of uh, data out of it, right third is desired output format now i'll use the same prompt but i will change this a little bit better i want this mail meal plan to be in a tabular form and should be a weekly meal plan and it should follow intermittent fasting uh, i want to follow intermittent fasting give me a weekly meal plan for the same represent the data in a tabular format so let's put this thing in let's see what happens all right so it has given some sort of data here but it says as an ai language model i cannot provide personalized medical advice okay mm, okay <laughs> it did have some restrictions but okay it did give some kind of result like 10 a.m to 8 p.m this is definitely not an intermittent fasting meal plan so let's say intermittent okay meal plan that complies with intermittent fasting so let's put this okay so now it's a little bit better uh, meal one meal two meal three but it did not give me any times so eight hours in fasting for remaining 16 hours, blah, blah, blah. I knew about this, but it did not give me a fasting window, right? Obviously, I, there is a little bit of uh, rush. I, if I put them, give me also a fasting window, the times when I eat, it will give that as well. But having clarity and specificity, context and background information, and the kind of output that I want, it has definitely brought in a lot of good amount of data. We can improve on it, of course, later on, but these are the three basic things that you want on top of it you can add uh, some expert persona like hey act as a fitness uh, fitness professional and give me this advice or uh, you can add an initial verb that we are already write me uh, this thing length and output type how long of a thing that i want whether it should be in a blog format should it be in a tabular format all those specific tasks and objectives what kind of desired outcome i want uh the particular tone and voice if i say right in the voice of uh, let's say if i say um right in the voice of elon musk maybe we can create something yeah <laughs> so it has kind of changed so tone and voice you can change target audience you can change let's say write it for middle-aged men ever uh, 45 it, it, it will give a different response out of it data and references if you want it to give you the right kind of data and reference it will give it out so other consideration you can talk about you know you can consider follow-up prompts if you got a particular result you can write one more prompt below that say tell me that you know write this in the form of uh, a human it will change you can purpose uh, you know change the purpose of the goal of the prompt you can change the perceived difficulty of the prompt you can say write me and explain to me as if i am a five-year-old kid it will change subject matter based on you know you, you can ask them to act as um, you know a geology scientist and who is expert in this particular subject and give you the right kind of response you can put in keywords especially when you are writing blog posts you can tell hey uh, this is my main keyword and this should appear at least three times in this entire blog post and they will it will definitely write it in that way uh, you can input related sources suggested you can ask it for suggested sources you can ask it for additional notes or you can like uh, tell them hey it's a draft response or finalize the response all those things you can do with chat gpt itself right so this is what we call the as the prompt defining and the next uh, lesson is going to be as interesting which is called the prompt refining right and i'll tell you the thought process behind prompt refining so that you can use it for your own business out there all right welcome to chapter number seven which is called the prompt refining now that we have defined a prompt it's also important to like you know make it even better so what happens is whenever you are writing a prompt for example uh, i have asked 
uh, for this prompt and I change this prompt to let's say you know let's say I, this is a new prompt that I'm putting in where I said hey you know what I'm a South Indian male this is what it is and give me a weekly meal plan here right and let's say I also want to add on top of it hey give me me um, also suggest me weekly uh, home workouts for losing weight and put the data in a tabular format along with meals so if i add this it talks about day uh, you know and the meal plan and we have just added a new prompt to get this data Instead, my thought process is like, why not just use this prompt along with this particular prompt, which you can refine by clicking on this button and, uh, you know, click on submit. And it will give you meals. And let me see. It has also given some home workout plan. If I say home workout plan, uh, format in the, the same table with the meals it should also contain at what time I should work out let's see so this is called uh, defining so here what he has done is like day one it has given me some times but it has not suggested okay it has not suggested uh, the workout plan in the same table both workout and meal schedules at in the same table let's see if it works yeah here what you are doing now it it's fine it looks good Right, Monday 12 p.m. to at least 12 p.m. Caspas, you have to work out. Tuesday 12 p.m. you work out. Or maybe after workout, it is asking us to eat. It has taken up to Sunday. So what we have just done is basically we kept on trying multiple prompts so that with one single prompt, we get the most refined outcome out there, right? So this one prompt, I can copy and save it as a five file and use it over and over again instead of constantly adding follow up prompts to make it better so that's exactly what prompt refining is here you analyze the ai's response that's the step one look for issues like some vagueness some inaccuracies and step number two you identify what exactly can i improve so that i get a better result out of it right and third once you have revised it you make adjustment add some prompts to you know to make it even better more crisper more sharper good context and step number four is when you revise the prompt, see if it works the best, right? And you can repeat the process to keep checking whether it works or not. If I were to, you know, change it even better, a little bit better, right? Um, let's say act as a fitness instructor and I am your client. And if I change this and boom, we have the table and every time the table is different so i might want to change this and by the way once the gpt has stopped creating results just put continue and it will continue the next part yeah so this is exactly how you go ahead and refine the particular prompt and you repeat the process until you get the right result right and now let's say i go ahead and put in the input saying, hey, write me a blog post on how to do intermittent fasting. So if you can read the language, intermittent fasting has been gaining popularity as a way to improve health, lose weight. It looks very <laughs> third person, right? I honestly don't like it. So if I want to refine the prompt, I just click on this particular thing and I want to make it a little bit better. Let's say I say write, a, you know, 1000 or 2000 word blog post on how to do intermittent fasting and right now the language is not that great so if i say write an active voice and first person singular now this will make a little bit of sense so if i click on save and submit 
all right if you are interested in trying intermittent fasting there are several things you should know here are the steps i take when doing intermittent fasting so definitely it is first person and singular right but it is still not great yet i'd be like uh, let's say i say start the introduction uh with a uh, emotionally with an emotionally engaging story a uh, personal story about how i lost weight uh with intermittent fasting and then uh engage the reader through out the blog with simple uh indian examples right as if you are explaining to a 12th grade kid let's say put this all right <laughs> see intermittent fasting has been a life changing experience for me both physically and emotionally i struggled with my weight for years and tried various diet but nothing seemed to work it wasn't until i discovered this technique and i was uh, finally saw results in this blog post i'm going to share this see <laughs> i love it now now you can see now if i hit continue it will continue this particular blog right step 6 step 7 step 8 and boom so we have a pretty nice long blog so if i say <coughs> uh write intermittent fasting for indians write it in a listicle listicle format it will go ahead and start writing right understanding this start slowly choose the right food all right so it's pretty good right so this uh, strategy what i just did you can see the number of iterations i did with this particular prompt is called prompt refining so what did i do i analyzed the first response it didn't look good i realized that the first key area of info, uh, improvement was like it was not written in active voice it was like very vague bookish language so we wanted it to write in active voice so that's that third you we need to revise our prompt so we checked this was pretty cool we can go ahead with it and kept adding more and more details in the prompt itself so that it looks or feels much better right next we tested the revised prompt and it seems like it's a pretty good uh you know blog post or a pretty good result so it has given us a cool summary and test the revised prompt and repeat the process so okay so the previous format was actually pretty good right in a step by step format if i just do this now i figure out okay this prompt is the best prompt out there then i can go ahead and save this particular prompt later so that i don't have to keep on adding multiple follow up prompts here so i'll put continue if i say every step should have a emotionally engaging story it can add the story as well to make the blog even more better so this is the process of prompt refining the idea behind this is you go ahead and create the perfect prompt that works just for you and keep using it over and over and over again for uh, you know your particular purposes so pretty slick huh in chapter number 8 i'll talk about three tips that you should you can use to take your prompt engineering to the next level All right chapter 8 three tips to take your prompt engineering to the next level here i'll give you three awesome tips that you can use to make it so much better that uh, you know we'll go crazy the first one is ask explicit questions so just like you look at the example here that we used here write a 2000 word blog post on how to do this or do this and this should be the introduction write as if you are working here and write in a step by step format very clear very direct which is why the a uh, body that we got is a pretty good uh, body so if i go ahead and add more input here let's say i say write uh in an informal tone and use emojis to make things fun and engage the reader throughout the blog if i just do this it will definitely add some emojis pretty much in every paragraph it is adding but pretty cool huh so when i added it it should write in an information in informal tone 
I, it definitely, you know, added a little bit of magic here. So pretty cool. You can also ask GPT to give you the response as if you are a five, fifth year old kid, 12th uh, class kid, and basically take on a personal love for yourself so that you get the right kind of response. Example, you know, write as if you are explaining to a 12th grade kid. This was an analogy. So if you write, change it to, let's say, uh, fifth grade kid, right? So it will be even better. Hey there, have you ever heard of intermittent fasting? It's a weight loss strategy that has been gaining popularity in recent years. I know what you, mean, what you might be thinking. Fasting? That sounds scary. Let me tell you, it doesn't have to be. I'm an Indian just like you and have successfully lost weight throughout intermittent fasting. Today, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about this. And I want to check if this kind of passes the grade grading test by Hemingway app. Just Google Hemingway editor and we'll open this up and I'll remove this and paste this. It says grade seven. Oh, okay. So it's definitely not exactly grade fifth. But it's pretty good. I, I like. I personally like it. Let's say I take this entire thing and say, so I think it says it's grade seven because there are a lot of sentences who are uh, easy to read. Um, three adverbs meeting the goal of three adverbs. This um, four of the sixteen sentences are hard to read. One of the sentences should be uh, you know very hard to read. So let me say. Uh, none, okay, make sure that none of the sentences are more than I would say, uh, wait a bit. Okay, so how many words is this? This is probably 10 words. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I would say, let's say none of the sentences are more than 10 words. I do this. All right. Now, this will make things fun. Let me see if we can have good results out of it. Okay. This is definitely not a 2,000 word blog post, but let's just go ahead and use it to see. Uh, what kind of grading level we are in. See, we got down to grade number four. This is fantastic. But still, we got some sentences that are hard to read. Maybe it was not possible to get them under 10 words. But yeah, so this was a pretty slick trick to make this blog even more readable. And you can use this trick to make your blogs readable by AI detectors as well. So uh, AI, we have content at scales AI detector, which is I, I use it a lot. It's called content at scale.ai. If I go ahead and check this AI for content, it says 80% highly likely to be human. So pretty good. We kind of did it, right? So it took up to step number. Okay, it took the entire thing. But yeah, when you have a very good prompt, you get very good results. That, that's what I keep saying. So now we also added include examples and analogies, specify response format or structure, guide the AI how to structure the response. For example, list five benefits of meditation along with a short explanation for each. I can do that. Uh, let's say list five benefits of intermittent fasting, explaining the examples of each in 100 words. Okay, he says, hey there kiddos. <laughs> okay, so we got five examples, but we did not add heading tags. I can go ahead and change it and make it even better. So I hope you got some idea on how exactly you can tweak around the prompts to get very high quality detailed results out of it, right? This is an example of a very good prompt. Uh, the more detailed it is, the better. As you can see, it says, act as an expert cold email copywriter and I am your client. I'm a marketing agency owner who only works with SaaS companies. Create five different personalized cold outreach emails that I should send to my target audience so that I can get more booked appointments to deliver my services. The subject line should be emotionally engaging so my target audience opens my email. It should be no more than three words. It should be a pattern interrupt or an open loop. This is a copywriting term. The body should be written actively and compelling enough to get me an email response. 
it should be no more than 100 words. It should highlight my target audience pain point and add a one line case study to show that we are worthy of having a conversation. Having a soft CTA asking the prospect to reply to my mail. Uh, the writing style is professional yet fun to read but approachable and targeted towards this target audience. Add a cool signature, email signature that is fun to read. And then I left blank spaces to mention my target audience, the pain points and the case study. And have a look how it works. Here I have actually added, uh, my core offer is I help SaaS founders to rank on Google within four months. I'll remove the audience pain points, let's see. And case study says that I have ranked uh, the most difficult keyword for Astra in the first page of Google. I would say for my last client, last client, I used, I ranked very difficult keywords within a couple weeks and achieved 1000 plus quality visitors. So yeah, revolutionize your SaaS. Uh, is your SaaS getting enough visibility? Skyrocket your SaaS success? Take your SaaS to new heights? Want to rack on Google? Oh wow, I love this. Great, great, great subject line. Beautiful. So if I say, does your ad suck? <laughs> so that can be a good subject line as well. But yeah, as you can see, this particular prompt is possibly the most uh, important prompt when it comes to like cold emailing. So I very clearly mentioned what exactly I want and give me a couple of offers. So let's say um, I remove the case study. Here is my offer. Pain point and uh, and should clarify why I'd be a great fit for them. Save and submit. Oh wow, hi there, I came across your company and saw that you're offering amazing SaaS solution, but I also noticed that your website is not ranking high enough on Google. As an expert in SEO, I can help you rank your new website in just four months. I have Help. Okay, so it has added some sort of credibility. Okay. Mm, let's say I say I don't have any case studies to offer. Let's have a cool experiment here. Let's see what happens. Uh, do you have the expertise and proven track record of success? Okay, it is not great. Uh, I'll just use chat GPT-4 to see what kind of responses I get here. Let's say I say body should be no more than 50 words. Make it even more challenging for our buddy here. Quick win alert, struggling with your SaaS company's visibility on Google. My marketing agency specializes in helping SaaS founders rank uh, in just four months. Let's connect and discuss how I can help you boost your online presence. Interested? <laughs> I will use this. This is pretty fun. So respect giant marketing magician and my company. This, this looks really, really fun. So I'll use it. So GPT-4 is much, much better. Uh, if I can say, right. I personally love GPT-4 more than any other kind of uh, AIs. So time for some bonuses. So welcome back to chapter nine. I'm so happy that you have completed till date, till this particular point. What I've been doing is I have been publishing a lot of content around chat GPT and for free. And, uh, this have, all these are covering many, many use cases around chat GPT, right? So here are a couple of bonuses that you can take a look and use it for your own business or your marketing purposes. The first one is how to use chat GPT for YouTube growth, right? So this video will show you how exactly you can use it to create thumbnails, how you can use chat GPT to create your YouTube headlines, description, all of those. And uh, I mean, I, there are two videos, one is on description and one is on thumbnails. I'll give you the links to that in the description below. And then I'll also show you how to create a buyer's persona with chat GPT. Whatever marketing campaign you run, you need a proper, proper buyer persona. So this particular video will allow you to create your own buyer persona with eerie details, with very, very large details so that you can use it for a marketing campaign, building websites, building landing pages, all sorts of things, right? Next, if you are somebody who wants to build a high ticket funnel, 
this video will help you craft everything from scratch. This includes writing headlines, landing page copies, VSL copies, the soundtrack you should be using in the VSL, the Facebook ad copies and everything in there which you will require to build a complete high ticket funnel. So I hope this one helps you a lot. Next. Uh, the next uh, video, the next bonus is creating a video sales letter with ChatGPT4. It is very, very smart and it can help you craft your own personal video sales letter that you can use for an appointment generation funnel. So this is all for you. Link is in the description or below this particular video. Um, it, I will also give you how exactly you can create a Grand Slam offer. How And not just that, there are multiple bonuses like how you can create your own offer for an agency or a coaching business, how you can create your own AI app and uh, how you to write undetectable AI content with ChatGPT so that you can rank your blogs, you know, very, very fast and produce content very, very fast, right? These are my selfish ways to make you like me and I hope that these help you a lot. In return, I only ask for one subscribe and one like so that this helps you a lot, right? 